Hey, welcome back to another walkthrough. This week we're looking at PowerPoint Chapter 3, Travel. Let's begin. We're going to first download our materials. We're going to go ahead and download materials. Remember, do not download all files. Make sure you download each individual file. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on each individual file. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my student file. And make sure you hit enable editing. So here is our PowerPoint document. Notice once again, we have our slide selector here on the side and we have our actual slides that we're working on uh, right here in front of us. So it says for the second step, it wants us to change the colors for the presentation to blue green. So I'm going to come up here to my design tab. Under the design tab, under variants, I'm going to hit the down arrow with the line above it. I'm going to select colors and I'm going to select blue green. So now that I've selected blue green, it says on slide one, it wants me to format the background with water droplets texture. Well, that's easy enough. I go ahead and Make sure my slide one is selected. I'm going to come up here to format background. From format background, I'm going to go to picture or texture fill. Here, I'm going to come down to where it says texture. And I'm going to hit the down arrow with the line above it. And I'm going to select the one that says water droplets right here. This last one, first row. And notice now I have water droplets on the back of my slide. It wants me to change the transparency to 50%. So I'm going to come over here back to my side panel here. And right here is my transparency. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 50%. Hit 50, hit enter. And notice that it will make it a little bit uh, transparent, a little bit more difficult to see. Now it wants me to select slides two through four. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cell or on slide number two. I'm going to hold down my control key, select slide three, and select slide four. With slides two, three, and four selected, it wants me to change the background to a solid fill. So my format background is still open. If not, you can click on the button. I want to do a solid fill. I want to click on the paint can right here. And I want to select the second to the last column, the third color. So second to the last column, third color. So one, two, three. Looks like it's blue, gray, accent five, lighter, 60%. Now it says on slide two, it wants me to hide the background. So I'm going to go ahead and click on slide two. Make sure you just click on slide two, make sure they're unselected. And it wants me to hide the background graphics. Once again, with my format background sidebar here, I want to put a check mark next to hide background graphics. Or step number six on slide two, which I'm already there. It wants me to insert a table, three columns and four rows. So I'm going to go ahead and come here and notice I have these icons right here. And one of them looks like a table. If I hover over it, it says insert table. I'm going to go ahead and click on insert table. And it wants me to do three columns, four rows. So I'm going to type in three columns, four rows, hit OK. And it wants me to type in all the information. Oh, it wants me to apply the table style, medium style three. So I'm going to come up here to my table design tab. I'm going to click the down arrow with the line above it. Under medium, it wants me to do medium three, accent three. So here it is, medium style three, accent three. Looks like it is the third row down under medium, fourth column over. Now I want to type in the information in step six. So it wants me to type in trip type. I can hit the tab key, which will take me over to the cell next to me. 
I'm going to type in day one. I'll hit the tab key and type in day two. Hit the tab key. Notice it'll take me down to the next row. I'm going to type in adventure seeker. Hit the tab key. Type in kayak and snorkel. As you're doing this, make sure you're paying attention to the capitalization of the words. Make sure they're spelled correctly. Go ahead and hit tab under day two. Type in nature preserve hike. Hit the tab key. Type in family dash friendly. Hit the tab key. Type in Pacifica Bay Zoo. Hit the tab key again, type in beach, day, and horseback riding. And hit the tab key again, type in arts and crafts, or arts and culture. Make sure you use the and sign. Tab key, Pacifica Bay Art Museum. And then hit tab key and artisan walk. And just do a double check real quick. Make sure that everything is spelled correctly. Make sure you put capitals in the right places. For step number seven, it wants us to resize the table so that the lower edge extends to the three inch ruler. Well, notice right now I do not have the ruler showing. In order to show the ruler, I need to come to my view tab. From my view tab, I need to go to my show group here and put a check mark next to ruler. And notice that we'll put rulers on the top and the side. So it wants me to resize the table so that the lower edge extends to the three inch on the lower half of the vertical. So it wants me to extend it to right about here. So I'm gonna come up here to my, this little middle dot here. I'm gonna click hold and drag and notice that I have a little red dotted line on the ruler as I highlight down. That gives you an idea of where you need to go. It says it wants me to go to the three inch mark. So I wanna take that dot, those dots on that ruler, get down to the three inch mark and let go. And then it wants me to distribute the table rows. So I'm gonna come up here to my layout tab here. Under cell size, I wanna hit distribute rows. And notice how it'll make all the rows the exact same height. It wants me to align the text table text so it is centered horizontally and vertically. So right here under my alignment grouping, I'm gonna hit the center button here. And I'm also gonna hit the center button above it. So I want this center button and this center vertically button, both of them clicked. So it looks like this. It says in the table, it wants me to change the font size of the first row. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up here. I'm gonna highlight the first row. I'm gonna click start in trip type, highlight all the way over to day two. I'm gonna come up to my home tab here. Under my home tab, I'm gonna change this to 24, my text size. It wants me to apply a divot cell bevel to the first row. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my Table Design tab here. Under Table Styles where it says Effects, I wanna click on Effects and Cell Bevel. And under Bevel, I wanna find the one that says Divot. And it's this one right here. It looks like the third row down first column. And notice that it gives it a little bit of a texture. On step number nine, it wants me to go to slide number three. After I click on slide number three, it wants me to animate the picture using the wipe entrance effect. So I wanna go ahead and click on my picture here. I wanna click on my animations tab here. Under animations, it wants me to select the wipe entrance effect. So I'm gonna find my animations here. I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna click the down arrow with the line above it. Under entrance effects, I wanna select wipe. 
it wants me to come over here and where it says start on click it wants me to click the down arrow here and start after previous it wants me to change the duration to 1.01.00 1 .00. so duration here i'm going to type in 00, zero. I'm going to type in 01.00 and hit enter. Next, it wants me to apply the split entrance effect to the bulleted list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the bulleted list placeholder here. It wants me to change the effect to split entrance. So I'm going to come up here to my animations. I'm going to click the down arrow with a line above it. And I'm going to find the one that says split right here. Notice how it gives me a quick preview of what it does. It wants me to change the effects options to vertical out. So I'm going to come over here to my effect options button right next to animations. And it wants me to do vertical out. And notice now it comes out instead of wiping in. All right, so now it wants us to go to slide number four. In slide number four, it wants us to insert a clustered column chart. Once again, notice my icons here. I can go ahead and click on the second icon, which says insert chart. And there it is, there's my uh, clustered column chart. I'll click on it, hit okay. And notice that I will get this charts in Microsoft PowerPoint sheet here. So it says beginning in cell B1. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in cell B1. It wants me to type in year one. I'm going to go ahead and hit the tab key and I'm going to type in year two. I'm going to hit the tab key and type in year three. Using my down arrow and my arrows, I'm going to use my arrows to go all the way over to A2. I'm going to type in spring. I'm going to hit the tab key. Type in 75600. Hit the tab key. And notice as I start putting numbers in here, it starts building my chart for me. So my next one's going to be 72600. Hit the tab key. I'm going to type in 81460. I'm going to use my arrow keys to go down to cell A3. I'm going to type in summer. Hit the tab key. Type in 105300. Hit the tab key. I'm going to type in 128, 730. Hit the tab key. Type in 143600. I'm going to use my arrow keys, go down to A4. Type in fall. Hit the tab key. Type in 35900. Hit the tab key. 58. 300 zero, zero. hit the tab key type in 58320 using my arrow keys going to go down to a5 type in winter hit the tab key 41600 zero, zero. tab 58430 hit the tab key and 67 300. Once I have all of that filled in, notice that it filled in everything for me. Uh, notice if you only get the two here, go ahead and hit that enter button, which will add in that third one. So now it built the chart for me. So here's my chart. It's already built it for me. I can go ahead and exit out of this charts in Microsoft PowerPoint. And here's my chart. We're going to do a little bit of editing to it. For step number 11, it wants me to apply the chart style 8. So I'm going to come up here to my chart design. And under my chart styles, I'm going to hit the down arrow with the line above it. And I'm going to find number 8. And it looks like it's this one with the black background. I'm going to click on that. It wants me to remove the chart title element. So I'm going to go ahead and come down to my chart. Hit this plus button right next to it. And I'm going to uncheck where it says chart title. So the chart title will go away. It wants me to apply the wipe entrance effect. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that plus button again to close that. I'm going to come up to my animations. 
under animations, under uh, the down arrow with the line above it, under entrance effects, it wants me to select wipe entrance. Notice when I selected that, the whole thing wiped in. It wants me to change the effect options by series. So I'm gonna click on my effect options here and click by series under sequence. And notice that it will wipe in each one individually. Just brings a different dynamic to your presentation. Now it wants me to go to slide number five. I'm gonna click on slide five. And it wants me to apply the style one background style to this slide only. For Mac users, there is a different set of instructions, so make sure you follow that, Mac users. Once I've clicked on slide number five, I'm gonna come up here to my design tab. From my design tab where it says variants, I'm gonna click the down arrow with a line above it. I'm gonna come where it says background styles. Under background styles, it's very important that you right click on style one. So make sure you right click on style one and apply to selected slides. Do not apply to all, make sure you apply to selected slide. And it will only apply that background style to that particular slide, slide number five. Now for step number 13, it wants us to insert our picture from our downloaded files. So I'm gonna come to my insert tab here, under my insert tab. I'm gonna come to media and where it says video, I'm gonna click on video. I'm gonna do videos on my PC. They should have downloaded to the downloads folder, so I'm gonna click on downloads. There it is, there's my video. I'm gonna click on it, hit insert. I'm gonna close out of my design ideas that have popped up. I'm gonna close out of that so I just have my video. Now I'm gonna come up here to my video format box here, or tab. I'm gonna change the height to six. And then I'm gonna do a line. So I'm gonna click on a line, center. And I'm gonna click on a line, top, which will bring it up to the top of my slide. And it wants me to apply the simple bevel rectangle video style. So where it says video styles here, I'm gonna click the down arrow with the line above it. And it wants me to do the simple, simple rectangle. So simple beveled rectangle right here, this very first one. Now I wanna click on the playback tab here for step number 14. It wants me to change the video options to start video automatically. So under video options where it says in click sequence, I'm gonna click start automatically. It wants me to trim the video so the end time is 00, zero colon zero 09. So right here where it says trim video, I'm gonna click on trim video. And under my end time, I'm going to highlight that, type in zero zero colon zero nine. And hit enter. It also wants me to compress the media in standard quality or low quality. To do this, I'm gonna click on my file tab here and go to my info group. Under my info group, I'm gonna click on compress media and I'm gonna do standard. For my Mac users, it does, uh, it gives you alternate uh, instructions. It says the compressed media feature is not available, so you don't have to worry about it. For my Windows users, go to the file tab, info and compress media. Once it's done, hit close. I'm gonna click the back button here now it wants me to go to slide number six. I'm gonna click on slide number six. It wants me to hide the background graphics. I'm gonna come up here to my design tab here. From my design tab, I wanna click on format background. I'm gonna put a check mark next to hide background graphics. It wants me to insert a picture for the background, so I'm gonna click on picture or texture filled. And then where it says picture source, I wanna hit insert from file should be under downloads and there it is it's by picture uh, of a beach hit insert and there it is very nice very pretty 
and it wants me to set the transparency to zero. So right now the transparency is 50%. I want to change it to zero and hit enter. For step number 16, it wants me to insert a header footer on the notes page. So I'm going to click on the insert tab. Under the insert tab, under my text grouping, I want to click on header footer. I'm going to click on the notes and handouts. I want to include the date and time. I want it to be updated automatically. I want to put check mark next to page number. And I'm going to add a footer and I'm going to type in three capital G underscore travel. Make sure you spell that correctly. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to all. I'm going to go to my file tab, my info tab here. I'm going to show all properties. And under tags, it wants me to type in travel comma space tourism. I'm going to go ahead and save my file. I'm going to save it again for good measure. And there it is. We just made a very nice interactive PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to come to my downloading starting materials. I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to choose my file. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And there it is. There's my student PowerPoint. I'm going to hit open. Upload. And submit for grading. I'll go ahead and close out of this. I'm going to click on the three dots. Check my submission. And it looks like I got 100%. You can go ahead and click on your submission to see what you did wrong, uh, if you did anything wrong, and you can fix it for a better grade if need be. Well, that concludes this PowerPoint Chapter 3 Grader Project walkthrough. Like always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and have a wonderful day.